subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Uh, so, we've given a function fn which is 0 for all the values less than minus 3 and n greater than 4 that is this uh, function is existing only between n is equal to minus 2 to n is equal to 3 right and uh, it is asking that if you perform these two operations then uh, uh, between what boundaries is this function going to exist. So, uh, see what happens is firstly I am going to represent fn, fn. See fn is 0 for all the values less than minus 3, it is not 0 for n is equal to minus 3, so it is going to occur at minus 3 and for all uh, the values that is occurring it is having magnitude 1, so minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, sorry. 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, these many samples the signal is going to have. Now, what happens is when I have to perform these two operations of reversal and shifting, we know that natural order to perform this is first shift then reverse. So, I am going to perform shifting first. What happens when I am performing this Fn plus 3, this is time advances or left shift. Now, uh, we have already discussed this, when you are performing left shift, this marker is going to shift to right by 3 units. So, what happens is, this marker is going to, going to fall here. Okay, now I am performing time reversal. Uh, we have already discussed that in time reversal this function is going to flip, right. So, this is how it is going to look like. Right. So, uh, this function is uh, having values from n is equal to minus 1 to n is equal to 6. So, if it is asking that it is uh, for what values of n it is going to be 0. So, f minus n f of minus n plus 3 is 0 for n less than minus 1 and n greater than 6. I am not putting an equal to sign here because I have uh, we are having samples at minus 1 and 6 ok. So, uh, this is how you are going to get questions from this model uh, ok. So, there is one more uh, question that we can see here uh, fine. Uh, so, rather you write it as note, note. To obtain a signal of form, to obtain a signal of form f of n minus m by l, f of n minus m by l following steps are to be followed. See, uh, this is not any general operation, you may uh, think that is general like just, just a shift of m by l. See, the problem here is this m by l needs to be an integer only that then only you can perform this shift operation. So, you cannot perform this directly ok, you do not know if m is 2, l is 3, you cannot perform this shift operation. Shift of 2 by 3 is not allowed in discrete time signals. We need an integer only if you uh, supposed to perform any shift operation. So, if I want to obtain a signal of this form, I have to perform it in steps. What steps am I going to do? See this f of f of n minus m by l can also be written as I am just taking this uh, 1 by l outside. If I just take this 1 by l outside, I can write it as ln minus m right. So, this is on, this is the basic that I am going to follow ok. This is the thing that uh, I am going to perform here. So, what do I do? First, first step that I am performing here is I am uh, I am considering f n and I am performing interpolation, interpolation. Now, what is interpolation? Dividing this argument by L, ok. So, I am obtaining uh, interpolation by L. So, I obtain f of n by L. I have just obtained f of n by l ok. Interpolation by l means I am going to pad some zeros or average or rk method, Newton-Raphson method whatever. So, I have 
performed interpolation by L. So to obtain a uh, argument of form f of n by L. Now next what do I do is next what am I doing is shift by m uh, right shift I am performing right shift shift right by m. Now we have already discussed this that whenever you are performing any shifting scaling operation it does not apply to the complete argument it applies only to the independent variable. So we are going to perform sh this shifting right by m this applies only to n so it is going to become n minus m ok this is not going to become n by l minus m y because this shifting scaling or any operation that you are applying is going to apply only to the independent variable and not to the complete argument. So this shift is going to take place only with respect to n. So this is what we have obtained till now. Now see I want a function of this form right I want this uh, n to be scaled by l. So now I am going to perform decimation, decimation which would be my final step. See uh, till now I have not performed any operation which hinders the basic definition of a discrete time signal. I have performed interpolation by L which is allowed. If this L is any integer this, this type of interpolation is allowed. Shifting right by any integer is allowed. Okay, if I performed a direct shift of m by l without checking whether m by l is an integer or not that would have not been correct. Okay, so if you have to in any case you have to obtain a signal of this form you have to follow these steps. So in the last step I am performing decimation decimation by L. See uh, when you are performing decimation you are going to lose some samples obviously we know that when we are performing decimation we are going to lose some samples we are going to lose some information but see that is the only way to reach here ok. So the finally you are going to obtain f of 1 by L into decimation is also going to apply to L on, uh, n only this independent variable only not to the complete argument. So this is going to become ln minus m which is in fact f of n minus m by L. So indirectly you have to perform these three steps to reach to a function of this form.